There is the uh, safety car and the medical car at the back. Green flag waves. Now look at the red lights at the top of your screen. They are on. And it's a textbook hold. And Nikki Katzberg it is who gets away. And it looks as though further back there's a bit of bumping and bustling and Chilton's on the grass contact with Guerri but the two Hondas slot in behind Nicky Katzberg so the Volvo leads and it's Norby Michelis and Thiago Montero side by side down to the corner that they had contact on the first lap in the opening race Thiago Montero can't get around the outside slots in behind his teammate Norby Michelis we're on board with the championship leader yeah, we are indeed. That was all very neat and tidy. It had some potential to go wrong with two cars on the grass into turn one. But, uh, of course, from a World Championship points point of view, Honda and uh, Volvo are kind of in reverse at the moment. And that's Guerrieri. Yeah, fighting with Nesta Girolami by the looks of things are going around the outside. Girolami trying to roll off the brake. Guerrieri goes wide. And Mehdi Benani now trying to look at the two Argentines. So here they are on board with Esteban Guerri and there is Nesta Girolami. No way through. Nicky Katzberg it is out front leading from Norby Michelis, Thiago Montero, Ted Bjork, Nesta Girolami, Guerri ahead of Mehdi Benani. Tom Chilton dropped back at the start behind his teammate. That mistake that Girolami made put him under pressure and guerrieri has gone through. That was a big error from uh, Girolami as he came to the top of the crest there, scrubbed off all the speed with that slide, which allowed his uh, fellow countrymen through. Locking the rear wheel into the last corner. Penultimate corner, I should say. Now they power through the last corner onto the start and finish straight, and that's just what Nicky Katzberg would have hoped in his pre-race ambitions. Yeah, and that slide from Girolami sort of allowed the top four to sort of get away, really, at the end of the opening lap. Now, Norby Michelis has been really quick at times this weekend, but as you said, Richard, fighting a stomach bug, and that could play havoc with his fitness. Didn't really go very far in the first race, yeah. so he'll be fresher than he could have been. Apparently didn't sleep well uh, last night at all, and... Uh, I think, uh, yeah, he's been struggling with illness all weekend, but from what we've heard, got a little bit worse last night. So, uh, yeah, he's just been hydrating himself and resting up as much as he can. Zom Zarbo just getting on the grass in his Zengo Motorsport Honda Civic. Then that allows Kevin Gleason through. So the American in for the rest of the season in that second RC Motorsport car. Just slotting in between the two Zengo Motorsport Hondas. RC Motorsport getting their first World Touring Car win in the first race as well as Erlache, the Frenchman who's aboard that Lada Vesta. Replay of Nesta Girolami going around and there's a bit of contact I think with Tom Chilton trying the same thing and that's uh, quite robust but borderline. Yeah, a very poor start from Guerrieri, which caused the concertina of those cars making a trip to the grass. And then uh, Esteban having to be very, very aggressive into turn one to get that place back from Medi Banani. Yeah, Tom Chilton there just trying to follow Nesta Girolami around. You can see Guerrieri just moving around. I'm going to guess what he's going to say. It's Guerri, but uh, I know who, he, he knows who he means. He just got the uh, names muddled up. Sounds like he's perhaps picked up a little bit of damage, and uh, that's why the car's not feeling perhaps quite as it should. So just communicating that to his engineer that uh, perhaps his lap times won't be what they should be. Norby Michelis now closing up to the back of race leader Nicky Katzberg. Thiago Montero going with him. There is the damaged Sebastian Loeb Citroen Alese of Tom Chilton. With race one winner Alese behind him, but Rob Huff also looking quite racy. He's got past Tom Coronel early stages of this race. Yeah, Rob Huff will be itching for a good performance here. 
it hasn't gone his way at all this weekend, has it? And a uh, little bit of contact between Ernest and the Brit. Of course, uh, Rob Huff's lack of pace is, uh, is is evident because he's been behind uh, other Citroens on the grid. Uh, but of course, the Citroen here with the uh, success weight formula of the series is carrying 80 kilos, which is really uh, holding those cars back here. Um, but of course, like I said, that does not explain why he's been behind the other Citroen runners. He has been struggling for pace. So the all Inkle squad, the Munich Motorsport team running that Citroen LS8. And at the beginning of the year, when he was announced in a Citroen, you really felt that uh, he would be a title favourite. Finds himself in seventh place in the points. Still not out of it, but uh, needs to find some form as we move. Final third, I should say. On board with Norby Michelis. And the gap just opening up again, even though he had the fastest lap last time around. Four of 13 laps completed. Mighty on the brakes there, absolutely mighty on the brakes. Uh, and like I said, at the moment, sort of in uh, championship points order, Volvo and Honda have their teams in the wrong thing. It's a team radio now from Tabuk. Uh, to behind, he's 1.7. He was one quicker than you in the last lap, so he's not gaining very much. Uh, you lost. Uh, 0.7 to uh, Montero in front on the last lap. Uh, target lap time is now 1.43.7. 1.43.7. And the uh, the target lap time there. Uh, these these drivers have to look after tyres and brakes and manage the performance of the car for the whole race. So therefore, quite often we uh, we have to get drivers to drive to a lap time, which is the best for the race duration. On board with Zolzabo, the battle for 40. Daniel Nagy is leading that train, and there is Kevin Gleason, the American, in the middle of this Zengo Motorsport sandwich. Yeah, all three of these drivers have never been to this circuit before, and uh, but they're, they're, they're certainly having a good battle between themselves here. Zolzabo aggressively coming to the pit wall there on the exit of the final corner. And the uh, Zengo Motorsport crew looking on. Zolzabo in for this weekend, his first World Touring Car weekend. He is a European Touring Car runner, a youngster who has impressed in that and so been given the role or the opportunity to step up to the main class. They've just dropped off the back of the main peloton, if you like. So it is Nicky Katzberg who leads for Norby Michelis. Thiago Montero, the second of the Honda's third. Ted Bjork is fourth, the second of the Volvos. Esteban Gueri, the Argentine, fifth. Medi Banani up to sixth. Nesta Girolami down to seventh now. And Tom Chilton still in eighth ahead of Erleche. So Kevin Gleason has found a way past Daniel Nagy. He inherits 14th place. Yeah, while we're watching this uh, battle at the back of the grid, uh, Katzberg is uh, saying some commanding lap times. Fastest lap of the race on a 143.4, and uh, he's pulling away at a, at a tenth or so per lap from Michelin. So at this stage of the race, uh, he's certainly got the pace. So approaching the halfway stage of the race. Yeah, I think uh, we could probably do with seeing what's at the front of the race now as we switch back to uh, Montero's on board. Like I said, uh, he could probably do with being ahead of his teammate come the end of this race for points uh, in the World Championship lead. Um, but of course, probably no team orders within Honda at this mid-stage of the season. Mr. Girolami has just been passed by Mehdi Benani, who's ahead of him now. Okay, next, so we need to try to finish the race to, to score some points for the Manufacturing Championship, please. Clearly, all is not well, we assume, as uh, he's struggling for pace at this time. He had some technical issues in the first race, so uh, all electrical gremlins. But the team needs some valuable points in the manufacturer's title race, as there's only 10 points at the moment between Honda and uh, Volvo. 
just motivating their charger there because it'll be a sinking feeling for Girolami. He hasn't looked uh, terribly pleased with how things have gone this weekend. Obviously, coming to your home round, you have high hopes and expectations. A quick car, but uh, he's not been with the best of luck and has been outclassed and outpaced by his teammates at this stage. Yeah, and uh, this is a big win for Katzberg if he can take this victory because uh, didn't score any points. But coming into the weekend, he was literally only 10 points off Montero's championship lead in third. So uh, if anybody needs a win, it is Katzberg who is currently leading this race, setting a very, very commanding pace. Again, uh, sort of the, uh, the class of the field in terms of lap time again that time around. But uh, you have to say, at this point of the race time, he's not exactly breaking away from the uh, Honda duo of Mikulitz and Montero. No, he's one mistake away from uh, just falling into the clutches of the Hondas, isn't he? One win to his name already in 2017, Nick Katzberg. That was uh, a couple of weekends ago in Germany, the Nürburgring. Now Rob Huff getting racy with Erlache. Yes, yeah, some, some big switches of lines there as he tries to find a way through. And this is great. I mean, you know, Rob Huff is uh, one of the most successful drivers in WTCC history. Um, he's won a huge amount of races. And uh, Erlache has one win to his name uh, as of about half an hour ago. So it's uh, a great, exciting battle to watch uh, a veteran like Rob Huff against uh, this youngster. on board with Tom Chilton. This is how they finished on the road in the first race. Chilton demoted Erlache into the limelight with the win. This is hard on my side. My front lift is so far out. It's making it hard to stay like a pig. Oh, it's hard to like a So Tom just bemoaning some understeer there, courtesy of that damage at the beginning. There's not much the team can do about it now. And this is disaster for Katzberg. Katzberg, race leader. Nicky Katzberg, it, what's gone on here? Puncture again, is that? Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is. Left front puncture. Again, so that cannot just be bad luck. No, that is a, a big surprise. Uh, we have seen tyre failures before with uh, the wrong pressures, or, uh, or sorry, not the wrong pressures, but very low pressures and high cambers can often lead to a tyre failure. You'd think they would have perhaps backed off those settings uh, for race two, given the puncture, but that has just cost Katzberg a very, very likely win in the World Touring Car Championship. And that's nowhere near... Um well, full race distance. So it's either a, a technical setting or he's cutting a curve somewhere that other people aren't. You know where sometimes if you cut too much uh, as you come back from the grass to the curve, it just nicks the tyre. But it, it nevertheless... Could, it, it could be, but uh, we haven't seen that the rest of the weekend. I think uh, this circuit has become more and more bumpy. And as we see oscillations in the tyre sidewall, sometimes that can stress the tyre cords and that's where a failure can happen. Generally, the, the actual wear happens in the early part of the yeah. race when the tyre pressures are, are, are low, uh, but then it causes a failure mode later on in the race. Fascinating stuff. Nicky Katzberg, our race leader, is out with a left front tyre failure. And Richard giving us a really good insight as to why that may be. And sometimes they do say, and you've heard it on the radio, stay off the curves at the beginning when the tyres are cool, when the temperature's not there. And that is to protect those uh, those failures later on in the race, is yeah, it? Yeah, basically, it sort of frets the cords. It's almost like uh, looking at some very taut string. Uh, and those cords get uh, get frayed. And then they cause a failure later on in the race when there's much more energy in the tyre. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's unbelievable that uh, Katzberg's just lost an almost certain 25 points and, and really now he's going to fall a long way behind Bjork and Montero uh, leaving Argentina. He has gone from being right in the World Championship race to probably becoming a bit of a rank outsider. Um, yeah, that's very, very unfortunate for the Dutchman. Two left front tyre failures for Nicky Katzberg and, uh, well... That is the end of his race, effectively, and that allows Norby Michelis up into top spot, Thiago Montero into second, and Ted Bjork, the second of the Volvos after Katzberg, now the lead Volvo, and there he is, the front trio heading into 
turn five. Esteban Gueri all alone. There is Mehdi Banani and Nesta Girolami. So they're spread out, really. Fourth, fifth and sixth, fairly spread out. Then you've got this fascinating battle between Tom Chilton, Erlashay and Rob Huff just giving Erlashay a little bit of a tap there in the middle of the corner. I think the other big sort of worry now for the Volvo pit wall will be that if Ted Bjork has very similar setup um, to Katzberg, they're going to be slightly concerned about his front tyres and uh, whether he could be looking at potentially a tyre failure in the closing stages of this race. So that will be giving them some worry. And he'll, he'll probably be instructed on the radio. Um, and uh, he'll be thinking of every little tiny vibration he can hear uh, could be the beginnings of a tyre failure. So, yeah, he's going to have a very nervous three final laps of this World Touring Car race. Well, Norby Michelis, who's not feeling very well, he's had a torrid weekend in terms of his health, didn't sleep well last night, stomach bug, and now he finds himself leading this main race. He won the main race last time out in Portugal, and he finds himself ahead of his teammate here, Tiago Monteiro, who's in turn ahead of Ted Bjork. Now, this will be interesting for the championship because Michelis will move... Will he move ahead of Nicky Katzberg? I can't I do my maths on air, he, but... It... Yes, he will. Uh, yes, he will, because uh, Katzberg also didn't score any points in the first race. Um, but, uh, yeah, we've still got a little bit to go, and uh, Norby's had a few uh, lock-ups the last few laps as well. He's still obviously pushing very, very hard to try and secure this win. Now we go back to the Zengo Motorsport duel. So Zolt Zabo just uh, getting frustrated with Daniel Nagy. This is the uh, battle for 14th and 15th. Yeah, some internal politics within that team. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're not points-paying positions at the moment, so uh, probably no harm done. Erlache still ahead of the all-inkle car, the Chevrolet LSA of... Chevrolet, Citroen, <laughs> let's say, of Rob Huff. There he is ahead uh, or just behind Erlache's Lada Vesta. Well, one thing we have learned today is that uh, Erlache is very, uh, very adept at uh, handling pressure. That's uh, a former world champion behind him in his mirrors, and uh, he's not given him a single inch in this race. Of course, Rob's struggling with uh, 80 kilos of success past, as are all the Citroens. Uh, but, yeah, he's uh, not opened the door for him yet in the 11 laps so far of this race. With the success ballast, what I find interesting is if you have a runaway car at the front, then everyone gets penalised. So, say Rob Huff, who's not having a particularly good time, is, uh, you know, penalised for, for other teams' success, successes. Now, I understand if you've got a a factory squad and three drivers but nevertheless if one of them loses points it's difficult for them to then catch up Nesta Girolami limping home corner 5 breaking another vibration in the bonnet I think was the gearbox but please please don't let the mark in your nose so Nesta Girolami. You are half a second faster than Benani, and we are one of the fastest of the race, actually. Keep pushing, please. Oh, I thought Girolami was going to stick his nose up the inside. He's caught Medi Benani, so uh, I said limping home. He thinks he's limping home, but uh, compared to the rest and the wider view, he's not in a bad position. Yeah, last time around set his best time personally for Sector 2. Um, Banani was more than fair there, actually. Gave uh, Girolami quite a lot of space. It's been very, very fair racing. But, uh, yeah, Girolami's definitely got the, the pace at the moment, but he can't find a way past uh, the Moroccan driver. Goes to the outside, has got the run here. Medi Banani might squeeze him off, and Girolami's going to have to uh, almost cede the position. They just about get through the final corner, and Medi Banani's still ahead in fifth place. Great racing, though. Very, very fair from both drivers. No contact made at this point. Uh, this is some great racing we're seeing here. Nesta Girolami 
giving his engineers a few heart-stopping moments there because they've been talking about making sure he scores points and finishes this race. Now he's caught Medi Banani and, uh, well, things are getting a little bit tasty in this battle. Yeah, more important now that Katzberg won't score in this race. Volvo really need the manufacturer's points from uh, their third car in Girolami. So if he can nick a few off Banani, it'll certainly be very welcome. And let's not forget, the Hondas are first and second. So uh, Volvo leading coming into this weekend, but Honda now in a great position in this main race with a lap to go. Many Banani's just pulled out a bit of a gap. I wonder if uh, Girolami's just trying to find his rhythm again and go again. Yeah, we're still sort of half expecting fireworks from this little trio of Chilton, Alache and uh, Rob Huff. They've been nose to tail all race, but uh, so far no one's uh, no one's had any bigger wooga moment in yeah. that little battle. Rob Huff's been very patient behind Alache. Who in turn has driven very well. Tom Chilton with a wounded car is ahead of the pair of them. And this is the battle for 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th. And of course, Chilton got some damage very early on, well, before he even got to turn one, in fact. So he's been nursing a bit of damage on that car and that's why he's bemoaning the handling. Uh, so he's done very well, really, to uh, stay ahead of this group uh, when you factor in the fact that he's really been struggling with that damage. So we're on the final lap here, and it is Norby Michelis who is leading. Six career wins to his name in World Touring Cars. He's already got a win to his name last time out in Portugal in the main race. Is he going to double up here in Argentina and make it seven career wins for the Hungarian? It's a little bit like cricket, isn't it? You know, you, you're watching the test match and uh, it's all going well. And then all of a sudden a wicket goes and there's a, it's a Honda 1-2. Exactly. You know, we've gone from a, a commanding Volvo win to a Honda 1-2 in, uh, in one stroke. So it's, uh, yeah, no, I don't think anyone expected this at the halfway stage of this race. And earlier on in the weekend as well, Norby Michelis has been quick, but it looked as though the Volvos could uh, stretch their legs if they needed to. It's not been the case here in Argentina. Norby Michelis has been picture perfect in this main race. He crosses the line for his second win of 2017, his seventh career World Touring Car win, ahead of his teammate Tiago Montero, who will well leave done, Argentina as the championship leader. A Honda 1-2 and Ted Bjork across the line to round out the rostrum in the lead Volvo S60. And then behind him, it is Esteban Guerri. Guerri getting across the line ahead of Mehdi Banani, Nesta Girolami, Tom Chilton ahead of Erlache, Rob Huff and Tom Coronel rounding out the top ten. You could see uh, Alessandro Mariani celebrating with the Honda pit wall. These are the kind of results where, in reality, I don't think Honda were the quickest car here this weekend, but they've just come away with a 1-2 finish in the principal race. And uh, this is how you win championships, you know, when you don't have the fastest car and you get the results. So all credit to the Honda team. Norby Michelin.